Uh, right, so hello, ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, in his out, is and in between us. My name's Dan. Welcome back to Pat Reports. Today is Friday, the 20th of March 2020, and today we're starting with reports over concerns that Durham Constabulary, Hertfordshire Constabulary, and Lincolnshire Police need to do more to protect vulnerable children from harm. Well, that's something that we I think we already know that most police forces need to do. A report by Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabulary Fire and Rescue Services found a number of issues that meant the forces were not as effective as they could be, although the forces were said to employ some good practices in a number of other areas. Uh, inspectors found that Durham Constance... <laughs> this is really hard to do with Daisy pulling faces looking like she's going to be sick. Right, let me get this done. Right. Uh, inspectors found that Durham Constabulary prioritised child protection matters and praised its officers in, uh, and staff for their commitment and dis dedication. The HMI CFRS report highlighted a number of effective systems in the forces control room, which allowed it to identify risk and prioritise response towards the most vulnerable, but noted that broader risks to other children were not always recognised. Hertfordshire Constabulary was found to have established effective systems in its control room to identify risk and prioritise its response to the most vulnerable. And the force also worked well with partner organisations to engage directly with children and made appropriate use of police powers. <coughs> That's not something that we hear very often. However, HMI CFRS also noted the presence of several problems, including an inconsistent response to missing children delays in providing specialist training and a lack of understanding of the thresholds for providing alternative accommodation. The report also noted significant concerns around the force's referrals process. Lincolnshire Police, however, were found to have improved its protection and safeguarding of vulnerable children since a previous HMI CFRS inspection in 2018, but had reduced effectiveness in some areas due to some remaining issues. Following that previous inspection, the force had restructured, restructured its child protection services and set up a new protecting vulnerable persons unit. And that was found to have a positive, positive impact on capability due to a more even distribution of workloads and improved resource flexibility. And that allowed the police to rapidly uh, for more rapid deployment of specially trained officers. But a relatively high number of absences in that new unit were flagged as an area of concern. And the report also found the supervision and standard of investigation remained inconsistent and that performance evaluation procedures, which would allow the force to measure the success of child protection strategies, were still not developed enough. Uh, let's hope for the sake of our children that these forces buck up their ideas and start to prioritise properly. Uh, right, next up, former Avon and Somerset Police Constable Edward Farrow has been a busy boy between the time he started working for the force and the time he left. There's a misconduct hearing set for March 26th to hear numerous breaches of standards of professional behaviour. Farrow has been accused of, number one, entering into inappropriate sexual relationships with vulnerable members of the public and engaging in sexual activity with them whilst on and off duty. Failing to disclose one of, an, one of his inappropriate sexual relationships when he had already disclosed another inappropriate relationship. Number three, disclosing confidential information about police investigations, including a murder investigation and the arrest of a suspect. Number four, failing to take appropriate action in response to a domestic abuse allegation. Number five, inappropriately demonstrating the use of a taser. Inappropriately demonstrating the use of a taser. I laughed when I read that, but that's what it is. Uh, I will update you on the outcome of that when the information uh, becomes available. Um, I want to thank Dee for the next report. Uh, Scotland's former finance secretary, Derek McKay, was reported to have sent 270 messages to a 16-year-old boy over a six-month period on Instagram and Facebook. After the messages became public, Mr McKay resigned from his post and released a statement apologising unreservedly to the boy and his family. He added that he had behaved foolishly and took full responsibility for his actions. The boy, who has not been named, later told a newspaper, I was happy to speak to the police and will tell them everything that happened. 
I didn't think what he was doing was a crime, but I knew it was wrong and should be highlighted. The former finance secretary repeatedly messaged the 16 year old, um, often trying to start a conversation, even when the boy did not respond. Mr. McKay, who is 42, contacted the 16 year old out of the blue last August. The boy told Mr. McKay he was only 16 and told him not to try anything, but Mr. McKay continued to message him. In a series of exchanges, the transcripts of which were published by the Scottish Sun newspaper, he told the schoolboy that he was cute, as well as inviting him to dinner and to attend a rugby event. However, Derek McKay will not face any criminal charges will not face any criminal charges for chatting to a 16 year old. Police Scotland said it and co concluded its inquiries and there is nothing to suggest that an offence has been committed. I'll let you think about that for a second. I mean, it's nice to see Scottish police stamping down on inappropriate contact between an adult and a child. Thank you to Charles for the following. Um, MP Kate Osmore has been ordered to apologise after threatening to smash a journalist's face with a with a fucking bat and using commons paper for a character reference to help her son in a drug dealing case the commons committee on standards yesterday found that she had made numerous breaches of the mp's code of conduct and ordered her to apologize to the house in the letter she had avoided harsher punishment for reasons including the committee finding an extreme language or finding the extreme language she held at the reporter in front of police officers had caused him to show no fear or distress. The commissioner concluded Ms. Osamore's actions in writing to the court using house provided stationery in speaking as she did to the journalist and in omitting to reply to correspondence separately and together give fuel to the belief that members are able and willing to use the privilege of office to benefit their own personal interests and to attempt to set themselves above the rules that apply to others. In October 2018, her son Ishmael Osamore was caught with two and a half grand's worth of drugs at Bestival in Dorset and sentenced to a community order after admitting four counts of, uh, possession, to in of possession with intent to supply cocaine, MDMA, ketamine and cannabis. Kate Osamore provided a letter to the court written on stationery bearing the crown port colours commons emblem that described him as a good person that came from a good home and she referred to him being a vital pillar in the community an integral part of her team and a councillor in a london borough of haringey or haringey a role he resigned from she also kept him in a fifty thousand pound a year job saying she was not aware of his drug crimes at the time when she was they said there was nothing wrong with her writing a character reference but she, because she used the Commons paper, wrongly suggesting that her plea carried the authority of the House. The following month, the then Shadow International Development Secretary called the Metropolitan Police, telling police a journalist was banging on her door and intimidating her and her family. Police told her they were wearing a body worn video camera which captured the exchange. She told Mr. Humphreys, Don't knock on my fucking door. I should have come down here with a fucking bat and smashed your face open. It added the police officer's written notes recorded that the journalist showed no signs of alarm, fear or distress. I'll explain something about that in a second. She accepted that her behaviour had fallen foul of accepted standards and explained that, her, that she had finally snapped after a month of what she said felt to be media harassment. The committee found her language to the reporter was extreme and highly regrettable, but found the strain and pressure she was under from the scrutiny to be a mitigating factor. So again, someone in a position of authority manages to escape any real punishment for their clear act of contempt of others due to their perceived authority. Now, the what's important about that is that the Commons, so we're talking about the House of Commons, the Commons and the police said that even though she used um, language she was swearing shouting and swearing at a reporter because he didn't appear to show any um distress at that language therefore she didn't commit an offense so we need to remember that as well although things are going to change over the coming months for sure 
Um, but I think, you know, if the Commons, the House of Commons and the police could say that the MP swearing at a journalist is OK because the journalist didn't look like he was upset, then I think we need to remember that uh, the next time we are picked up for public order, swearing, etc. I want to say a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. There's Motty Lad, Holly, AD, Dave, Ian, Copwatch, Dean and Josie. Uh, your support will help me to continue providing you daily content. Although I do want to say, there's something that I do want to say here. If you're watching this, any of you guys that I've just mentioned, with what's going on at the moment, the last thing I want to do is to have you give money that you need for yourself and your families. OK. Patreon is a monthly thing and you've agreed to, to help out in that respect. I'm giving you the opportunity with no ill will or anything like that to cancel the Patreon for now until we know what's going to happen. OK, because this isn't about me making money. This is about me doing what I'm doing and making sure that I can continue doing that. So if you are in a situation where you need what you've offered to pay through Patreon, then please cancel it and take it back. OK, um, I just want to make that clear. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Uh, like, share, comment and subscribe. Uh, let me know your thoughts, as I know many of you will. Until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials. Good night, all. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so. In the description of every video, there are some links to ways that you're able to help support the channel so I can continue putting out content. If you're unable to help us in that way, hit that subscribe button up the top there. If you haven't already, become a subscriber. That is support enough. Share the videos, comment, like, it all helps. If you're looking for something else to watch, up top there is my latest video. Down the bottom there is a video that YouTube recommends for you.